Mark, let's say I come in, I'm at one of your golf schools, it's 85, it's Naples, it's beautiful, but I'm not hitting the ball solid. And we record my swing, I know that I have a, a too flat of a shoulder turn. You say, all right, dude, let's start to work on this. What would be a drill that I could start with? Absolutely, I have an awesome drill. What I like to do is I'll take an alignment stick and I'll just put it in the ground about six to eight inches to the inside of the golf ball. Gotcha. It's and up. what I'm gonna ask you to do is take your club, put yep. it across your chest, arms crossed. Got it. And what I want is I want the club head closer to your right shoulder. Got gotcha. So okay. more of the club is exposed off your left shoulder. So like none of the club kind of hanging out over here, all of it. Over. Exactly. Got it, okay. Exactly. And now I'm simply gonna ask you to take your posture. Got it. And I want to see how low on that stick, because we need an exagger exaggeration, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how low on the stick can you get that grip? How low on the stick can I get the grip? So I'm normal posture, club across. I'm gonna make my backswing turn and I'm trying to go as low as I can. Okay, so that's beautiful. All right, guys, before we dive into this video, I want to talk to you quickly about two things. Number one, we have launched our golf school dates for 2020 in Bethlehem, PA. We're going to go ahead and put a link in the description down below. If you'd like to come get some in-person coaching, I would certainly love to have you. Now, if you can't make it to Bethlehem for in-person coaching, we'd still love to work with you via CogornoGolf.com. That's our online community full of golfers like yourself and myself looking to improve. That's where you can send me your swing. I can help identify priorities, take your game to the next level. Most importantly, as a member of Cogorno Golf, you get access to our Facebook group where you can post that swing, get into the community, get into the conversations. You get access to everything we have, all of the master classes, the member library, the practice section, as well as the quick fix section. Would love to see you guys there. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are not here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. We are here with Mr. Mark Durland. I know most of you guys are going to know who Mark is, but if you don't, Mark is a top 100 golf magazine teacher. He's the director of instruction here at the beautiful Naples Grand uh, here in Naples, Florida. It's about 85 degrees and sunny. Mark, thanks for having us out here today. Thanks, Eric. Great to have you. Appreciate it. So now in today's video, um, we're going to talk about an important uh, backswing piece for compression. Uh, that we think is a must absolutely right to be able to hit the ball farther and before we dive into all of that why don't you guys here take a quick look at uh, what we're going to talk about and how some good players do this move in their backswing okay so what are we looking at here during the backswing that we need to do uh, to be able to compress the ball now while there's a lot of different backswing variations one thing all good ball strikers do is that lead shoulder is going to work down during the backswing, going to be some tilt. Huge correlation between solidness of contact. So, got Adam Scott. Everyone likes Adam Scott. I'm going to draw a straightish line, uh, roughly where his lead shoulder is. What I want you to watch, imagine let's say a wall there, is how his lead shoulder, his left shoulder, is going to work down underneath the wall. Do you see that movement right there in his takeaway? So, his left shoulder started roughly, we're guessing there, where that red line is. Notice as he works back, the left shoulder goes underneath the wall. And then by the time he gets to about left arm parallel, a good check point here for most people is the shoulders. And clearly from here, his left shoulder is down much lower than his right shoulder. His right shoulder is this high. His left uh, shoulder underneath there is this high. So his left shoulder is way underneath there. Now, by the time he gets to left arm parallel, what you're looking for here is roughly a 90 degree-ish angle, right? So kind of perpendicular-ish uh, of the shoulder tilt, meaning how much tilt should we have there? Uh, pull up one or two more examples. So here's a Brooks Kepka. Uh, during the backswing, another pretty good golfer. And we're going to see the same thing if I can get him to a starting position. We're going to draw a rough estimate of where his lead shoulder is at address. We'll call it somewhere about there. As he starts to work back, notice initially during his takeaway, that left shoulder goes where? It goes underneath the wall, right? Which makes his left shoulder lower than his right shoulder, creating the tilt. And then as we get back to left arm parallel, we're going to see again kind of roughly what you're looking for. Hey, Eric, how much tilt should I have? As you're trying to get this kind of T going here, right? So lead shoulder goes underneath the wall. There's two examples. I could show you 100 that do it. If you draw a line across from your lead shoulder, get your shoulder going underneath the wall to start the backswing for more compression. 
All right, guys, so there you saw, right, the best players and good ball strikers clearly have a lot of tilt in their backswing. Their lead shoulder's going lower as they go back relative to their trail shoulder. Absolute must if you want to compress your iron shots. Now, luckily for us, Mr. Mark has a drill here that we're going to talk about that we haven't shown before, so I'm excited for you guys to see it, how you can start to learn, do I have enough tilt? How do I start to practice that? So, Mark, let's say I come in, I'm at one of your golf schools, it's 85, it's Naples, it's beautiful, but I'm not hitting the ball solid. And we record my swing, I know that I have a, a too flat of a shoulder turn. You say, all right, dude, let's start to work on this. What would be a drill that I could start with? Absolutely, I have an awesome drill. What I like to do is I'll take an alignment stick and I'll just put it in the ground about six to eight inches to the inside of the golf ball. Gotcha. And, and what I'm going to ask you to do is take your club, put yep. it across your chest, arms crossed. Got it. And what I want is I want the club head closer to your right shoulder. Gotcha. So okay. more of the club is exposed off your left shoulder. So like none of the club kind of hanging out over here, all of it. Over exactly. Here. Got it. Okay. Exactly. And now I'm simply going to ask you to take your posture. Got it. And I want to see how low on that stick, because we need an exagger exaggeration, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how low on the stick can you get that grip? How low on the stick can I get the grip? So I'm normal posture, club across. I'm gonna make my backswing turn and I'm trying to go as low as I can. Okay, so that's beautiful. Yeah, so absolutely. So if I, if I made a backswing and I went too flat, and now I'm getting ahead of you here. No, that's okay. And I went too flat, so that would clearly give me feedback. Here would be flat. Absolutely, miss right. the stick, over top the stick. Yeah, too, too far above. This would be the not compressed iron shot. And so if I'm someone who's here, I'm trying to get the butt of the club to hit the stick. If you know, we have the distance right. Right. But the point being, go as low as I can over exaggerate. For the exaggeration, absolutely. So club across, so I'm gonna feel here that I'm gonna try and get this all the way down. So now when I do that, I'm feeling some different things than normal. Right, and some things that you're gonna feel, and I think what aids in getting that left shoulder, shoulder lower is gonna be the left knee has gotta bend some. Yep and the left hip is gonna work down. So if I make a backswing, and, uh, and this is good, these are some things that people are gonna feel when they do this. If I make a backswing to make this tilt easier, right, and to coordinate it, my left leg is gonna bend. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not going left straight up like this. Correct. So my left leg's gonna bend, and as I'm doing that, you're saying there's gonna be some tilt here. The pelvic tilt, yeah. yeah. So the left hip is gonna feel lower than the right hip. Got it, so when I'm going back, I can feel my left leg bending to help do this, right? Mm -hmm. My left side of my hip, or uh, lower than my right, we'll say as we work back. Now, as I'm doing this, for me, I'm also feeling some differences in my left and right side. Now I conveniently, sometimes my backswing don't have enough tilt. So these are real feels for me. When I go back and I do this correctly, when I'm trying to get it as low as I can, I have two feels here, Mark, and let's see if I'm on the right track. I feel like I'm doing like, a, like an oblique crunch. Absolutely. On my left side mm -hmm. here. And as I'm doing that, I also get a sensation that my right side and like my right kind of oblique area is, is uh, lengthened. Yeah, a lot of stretching there. Yeah, so if I did it poorly and I went back, now I feel like my left side's lengthened instead of kind of the crunch, right? And then I feel like my um, right side isn't stretched out at all when I do that. You might feel nothing on both sides as well if you're really flat. Yeah, gotcha. Might be I'm just standing here. Perfect. And so th this is a beautiful, simple drill that I've never seen before. So take the, the stick here in front. We said six, eight inches. We can kind of play around with that a little bit. Right. But the point being, how do I know if I have enough tilt and how can I practice it? Get the club across my shoulders, majority of the club on the left, and I'm trying to feel that as low as I can. Now, let's say I, I do that a little bit and I want to start to uh, transfer it. Let's talk a little bit about how we're going to take that out to the range, actually hit some shots with that. All right, Mark, so I get the drill, I've done it, right, and, and it feels pretty good. Now I wanna start to hit balls because uh, I'm sure as the golfers that you see as well, the practice swing's pretty easy, but what about when I have a ball there? Now, um, what we just talked about a little bit off camera is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and perform the drill uh, with the stick right next to the ball, and then I'm gonna hop in and basically try and retain that same feel and maybe even kind of exaggerate a little more with that, with that ball there. You like that, General? Yes, I do, and, and it's all about transfer. Yeah, and, and I can like... I, can I take it from the, the, the practice into the actual? Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. not just have my practice swing be good. That's right. And, and this, guys, I like how Mark does his work, literally right outside the ball. Now, one little caveat I will say from face on, when you set the stick up, maybe put it a little to the right of center. That way, when I'm doing this, for me who doesn't turn a lot either, 
I can feel like I get as low down as I can, and also it really helps me get a good you know, backswing turn as I go. I, I agree 100%. You like that? Absolutely. So I'm feeling the butt of the club lower. I really distinctly from that am, am feeling a left side crunch. So I'm gonna try and come in. <clears throat> the thing I like about that is now you have a trigger to take into your golf swing. Exactly. If I have that left side crunch, yep. I'm probably okay. Yeah, exactly, okay, exactly, perfect. So I'm gonna take this now, now I have a seven iron here. Um, when I start to do this in the beginning, we're probably doing like half swings, right? 100, yeah. 120 yard. Right, we'll work our way up to full speed for gotcha. sure. Gotcha, mm -hmm. okay. Just so I, uh, focusing mainly on the feels, right? Yeah, got it. Okay. So I did the drill. I'm, I'm taking from that the left side crunch. Now for me, when I do that, that probably looks normal from down the line, but feels exaggerated. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna do a little half one. Left side crunch back swing. Yeah, and that felt really good, Mark. Yeah, that's as good as it gets right there. And it's it's interesting when we do some of these when it's a when it's a fault that I personally have in my swing. Cause there I turn too flat, right? And there, that to me feels like I'm getting my left shoulder so low it's unbelievable. And it probably looks normal. It looks perfect. It looks I'm normal. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so the point being, when you're watching, if you're too flat you need to be willing to go that far, overdo it. Even if your downswing stuff doesn't match it yet and you hit one goofy, who cares? Get that piece right. And so maybe I'll do one more. I felt really good. I'll do another one. Yeah, I'd like to see another one. So I got the stick up watch. just to the right of center and I'm feeling like I'm getting the butt of the club as low as I can. I love that. And gonna make sure I get, so that to me feels lower than normal. I feel that left side crunch. I'm gonna come in, tee it up because I'm not super confident. Seven iron half swing. And I'm trying to retain that same crunch feel during my backswing. Yeah, it feels really good, Mark. So I'm in for the next Derlin Golf School, but all kidding <laughs> Just for aside, those people off the camera, that half seven iron's flying about 160. Yeah, and, and it goes back to the compression part. Right. Right, that, that for me felt like I didn't have to put as much effort into getting the ball to go farther than I normally would with, with my amount of shoulder tilt. And if we look, um, you've created a beautiful line of compression where the divot's in front of the golf ball. Yes. Perfect. Life is good, easy game. Easy game. So that's the initial drill, okay? Now, the reality is there's some things that you might be doing beforehand that might mess you up. We're gonna get to that in a second. So as you're doing the drill here, guys, the reality is when you're doing this, there's some things you could be doing earlier on that may make this a lot easier or more difficult. And in particular, the setup and the posture pieces could make it easier to have the tilt or more difficult. So uh, Mark, if you could guide me through what we would say would be a good posture where I'd be have no problem doing the tilt and maybe what's the top like one or two things after that that, that might cause me to have issues with that. Definitely. So there's three checkpoints I look for when it comes to the posture. Yeah. And the first is... Hopefully I hit those here when we go. <laughs> go ahead, sorry. So first is hands under the shoulders. You check that box. Okay. Okay. The next, I'm gonna find the ball of the hip joint, which is right in here somewhere. Yeah. I'm gonna draw a line down from that, and that should go right to about the middle of the foot. Okay. So you're good there. And then I'm just looking to make sure that we have proper spacing between the hands and the legs. Uh, which you do. It looks great. I check mark those boxes. All of them. Okay. Yeah. So um, now when someone's doing that, they could check that with a mirror, video. All the above. Yeah. Yeah. So shadow, shadow on the ground. Shadow. Perfect. Got it. Uh, yeah. We're in Florida. So if that's right, 85 <laughs> degrees or so. If let's say I don't have those, what in particular with the setup might someone need to look out for that could make it really hard with the, with the shoulder tilt? Yeah, definitely. The thing I get day in and day out at my golf school is sitting. So the, the legs would be too much under the, the hips. So if you just get your uh, feet really close to the golf ball, yep. you know, now I come in and I check that ball joint of your hips and I see that it's behind your feet, behind your heels. Yep. As a result now, your hands are very close to your body. Yeah. And I think it's, it's natural because people sit so much, right? I'm sitting in the car, I'm sitting at the computer. I'm, Absolutely. Right. Well, and I feel from here, Mark, um, I get two sensations. Number one is I feel tall with my upper body. Mm -hmm. I feel like my weight's back on my heels. And I feel like with those, I almost can't um, get my left shoulder to go down. It feels- I, I was just gonna say, here's a challenge for you. Show yeah. me how low you can get your <laughs> yeah. left shoulder from there. Yeah, it, it feels yeah. extremely, like I can't turn. It feels very awkward right. and, and difficult for me to do. And really both of those things in together. Like if I'm right. standing tall, sitting back on my heels, I feel like I just wanna turn level. Right. So maybe the opposite of that, like if I was, 
if I was this way, uh, more bent over, mm -hmm. right, and maybe a little farther, that would be, even if I overdid it, right. that would be the most inclined to tilt, right? Right. The, the tallest and on your heels would be the least inclined to tilt. Well, the thing, when you're in that position, you're compressing your pelvis. Yeah. So there's a lot of pressure on your pelvis, so it's tough to tilt Feels and turn. Terrible. Right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, hit the checkpoints is the, is the take home here, right? Absolutely. Hit those checkpoints, look out for those setup pieces if that uh, is an issue at all, and, and do the drill, get as low as you can, record yourself so that you can see what you're feeling the level of exaggeration is not real you may not have been able to to see that and i know i said this a couple of times that felt like my left shoulder was so low during the backswing and it probably looked normal so for you to make it look normal you have to do the same thing i think it's a really good uh, explanation and drill in terms of getting the lead shoulder to hit the ball more solid if you guys have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. If you're interested in coming to beautiful Naples ever, why wouldn't you 85 and sunny? Mark runs uh, individual lessons in golf schools down here. You can check Mark out at DerlinGolf.com, I think on all social platforms. Yes, or less. yes. Highly recommend you guys come out. You can't see the beautiful practice facility here, but it is awesome. If you guys liked this video, I would really highly suggest you watch both of the videos above here. They're gonna talk more about this topic, give you more drills and feels to hit it solid. If you like the video, click the like button, click the notification bell, please subscribe. Thank you guys.